Big Boy's Big Neighborhood, boy. ladies and gentlemen, the African king of comedy hey. is in the neighborhood, and that is Michael Blackson. Michael Blackson, what up, bro? What's up, you mother sucker? You oh. mother sucker. <laughs> I'm in the building, man. My first time here. Hey, man, yeah. and thank oh, you excited. for coming so into the building, man. No, this is one of those where, Mike, we've been good for years. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, you know, I made the move. We here now, man. And I was like, Mike, I said, this is the first time we had a chance to really sit down, and, and we've worked together. You know what yes, I'm saying? Yeah. I've been in the audience many a times at your show. You know what I'm saying? Now that we know each other, hopefully. Hopefully I can get a little closer. Okay. Now I probably don't want to get too close to to some of the stuff that you do on, on on stage, man. How has it been out there? Like Mike, even with social media, Michael Blackson, we get a chance to really see oh how busy people are, mm-hmm. and we get a chance to look inside your world. How busy are you, and how much do you stay on the road? Uh, it's very busy, man. But busy is good in this in, in the entertainment business. Yeah, know? man. Uh, things are great. My, I mean, my fan base is growing. You know, my shows are selling out yeah. everywhere I go. Um, Do you get recognized everywhere you go, Michael everywhere Blackson? I go. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and that's, I gotta give a shout out to social media. Of yeah, course, it oh, made a man. difference. You know, I mean, back then we think about the early '90s. You had to be on TV to get known. Mm-hmm. You know, now pretty much your social media is your own television. Yeah, it's, it's, it's your it's own like channel. Your cha- that's what I was about to say. It's your channel, it's your man, channel. and it's your content that you want to put up and that you want to control. My favorite on you, if y'all not follow Michael Blackson, is that who did this to me? Yeah, yes. man. my my haters, man. <laughs> haters you know, my fans, my fans just you know one thing I do. Uh, one thing I do that others don't do, I interact with my fans. Yeah, if I never interact with my fans, I would probably lose half my material. Mm-hmm. I get my material from my fans. These guys are my ghostwriters. They have no idea. Yeah, yeah, I owe you know what I'm saying? fans money. Yeah, you just don't give it to them. <laughs> I just don't give it you to them. You know what I'm saying? But, but at least you acknowledge that. I acknowledge too. them. And, and it was one time I, I took a picture. I had on like a pink suit and a white T-shirt. And then I have my chocolate face. Yeah. Go ahead So now. I posted this picture up. And next thing you know, I, I went in my DM. I, I, this guy took my picture and put it next to Napoleon ice cream. It yes. Pink, brown, and, and white. Yes. So I, I screenshot it and I posted it. And I said, who did this to me? <laughs> and since I did that, every time I put an outfit on, they People get just, you. They just get Like, me. even today, we <laughs> so literally great. saw you walking up, and we was like, man, he's wearing a suit. And we were like, even Louis was like, yeah. take a picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> because somebody's going to go ahead and do it. Who did something. this oh, ish yeah, to me? To yeah. How did you get into comedy, bro? Like, you, you came to the States when, Michael Blackson? Uh, at a very young age. I was about 13 years old. I, f- I spent the first two years in Newark, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Newark was rough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then what, to Philly? Yeah, yeah. And then Philly, to Philly. Philly Philly's wasn't rough. Yeah. Philly, well, well, you know what? Newark, Philly... Newark, Philly made Newark look like uh, Los Angeles. Right, right. You know what I mean, it made. I mean, Newark was like Baghdad. Uh-huh. It was Newark was rough. You couldn't get no job. It was tough. You know, uh, my mother had to work at McDonald's mm-hmm. for like you know and make like fifty dollars a week. So it was rough in Newark, and then cost of living was more expensive in Jersey. And then she mm-hmm. had a couple of friends in Philly that told her that you know Philly is cheaper, so come to Philly. So she came to Philly, and things were different. By the time I got to Philly, I was about fifteen years old. You know, I'm going to school. Kids making fun of me every day. Oh, man. How did you feel? Like, And let me ask you this, mm-hmm. man. And this ain't clowning or anything. Like, right. you came in from Ghana, correct? I came in from, I, I was Liberia. I, Liberia? I, Liberia mm-hmm. and Ghana is where, you know, my, my heritage is from. Now, when you got here, mm-hmm. and, and this ain't a joke, did your skin lighten up? <laughs> like, like, cause, cause we look at you now. But cats Who say, did this oh, to me, but yeah. I that. You know, but we look and we say, but, but have you seen like cats that when, and, and, like they're in Africa, mm-hmm. and then they get here and, and and they lighten up just a little bit from from climate or whatever. You and know, you know what, what I have no, I don't, I don't really know, but I, I don't think I light up anymore because the kids clown me. It was all my complexion jokes. Right, right, yeah. I didn't man. know. In fact, I did not know how dark I was till I came to America. Really, and you found out. I quick, found huh? out really quick. I mean, they, every dark name. They, somebody told me the first guy told me I look like. Like under the bed. That's oh real dark. Yes, oh, wow, that's, bro. <laughs> like, Damn. That ain't funny. <laughs> I mean, and, and the thing, you know, when I came, I because where I'm from back then, I mean, things are different now. You know, but back then in Africa, we didn't see complexion. We just saw every black person being the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I came to America, somebody was like, damn, you black. I said, of course, we're all black. He said, no, you black as hell. Yeah, <laughs> man. Like, you know? like the most racism had to come from us. My, huh? my own people. Like, damn. No, just, and it was somebody wow. just a slight shade lighter than me. Right. Call me under the bed. Right. If I'm under the bed, are you under the table? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Not all the way down here? <laughs> what brought y'all to America? Uh, my mother is an evangelist. She traveled the world preaching the gospel. Oh, man. And they said... And here's her son. Here's right. her son. <laughs> the African know, king of yes. comedy. <laughs> the thing about it, preacher's kids are always the worst. You man. said <laughs> it. I, I didn't want to say it, but... Yeah, <laughs> you know, I remember being six years old and, and grabbing a tape recorder and cursing on it. 
This is way before <laughs> I even thought about And I knew eventually something was going to come out of that. Mm. Six years ago, I remember taking a low tape recorder back in the freaking village somewhere in, in, in Liberia where I was raised. And I remember pushing button and recording myself just saying like a bunch of words that my mother would not approve. And I'd sit around and I'd think about that. I'm like, damn, this is where that came from. Did, did I had... it feel different? Like, man, I, I think I like this. <laughs> I'm getting away with it. Yeah, it's so taboo. <laughs> it, I was, you know, I, I didn't think about it till I became a comedian. I'm like, damn. I was Because I stopped and I was like, where does comedy stuff come from? Why am I cussing so hey, much? Hey, man, can you, just, and, and, and can you just tell me the words in your voice, how you said it into the tape? Are we a lot? I'm just really yeah, bad go, words. Go, please. Pussy dick. Penis, vagina. I was saying a bunch yeah, of things right, just yeah. out of nowhere. I, I went to hear so myself good. say it. Right. And, and like now I'm grown and those are my favorite words. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, now you know where it came from. Yes. Now when I, you come, when you do come to America, man, mm. where do you, where do you, of course you're in high school or whatever, but where I'm, do you start like working at? Like what, what was the experiences before we get Michael Blackson, the comedian? It was that we tough. Know? I, you know, I, like I said, kids made fun of me. And, and, and back then when I, I came like late 80s, it was all about, you know, Michael Jackson, Elder Barge, light skin. It was a tough era for me. Right, you know? right, right. Under the bed. Somebody told me the difference between me and midnight was 1159. Yes. He yes. said, when God oh said, God. let there be light, I was out of town. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they told me every time I wear a wife beater, I look like a skunk. Oh. <laughs> hey, Amen. They told me Stevie Wonder sees me every day. Go ahead now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay to laugh, wow. you guys. Man. That's dark, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. And then one thing too that I know is about America. America is very materialistic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then back home where I was, you know, girls like the guy. If you're like 12, 13 years old and you wore new clothes, the girls is impressed. Oh my god, he has new clothes. Mm -hmm. And when I came to America, I thought I could just get away with just new clothes. Right. I, you know, my mother took me school shopping. My first time in school, I was like eighth grade. She took me to like McCrory's and Woolworth's. Mm. I don't know if you guys had them. Yeah, yeah, we, got, we had Woolworth's. We had Woolworth's and bought me some new clothes. You know, I had my first sneakers was called In Action. Right. But I didn't care right. because it was brand new. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I got my In Action on my new shirt, my dress pants and sneakers. You know, looking like a, I go to school, I'm just happy I got on new clothes and right. I get these girls. It's like, and then it's like, and, and then? Kids like, and then the kids like, what the hell are you wearing? I said, what you mean what I'm wearing? This is new. They said, yeah, but it's not Adidas, it's not Nike. It's not. I mm -hmm. said, it's brand new. Nobody ever worn this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they clown the hell out of me. Oh, clown me, clown me, clown me. So you were one of the first one of those. Yes. They yeah. bought, they bought my, I bought my sneakers. My mother bought my sneakers next to the chicken. Right. <laughs> hey, man. But your thing was like, it's new. You it's like, brand new. I didn't care. This. Nobody never wore this. this. I'm the first one to wear this. Yes. It's fresh. Oh God, I'm so about to go fresh. to school and I'm about to shit on all my hate <laughs> Yeah, man. Oh, this is it. Man, they clown hard. me. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like now. Oh, the level, man, the field has been leveled. Mm -hmm. So what when I finally about? realized what it took to fit in, that's when I had moved to Philly. But I moved to Philly, I realized what it took to fit in. You gotta, you know, wear dress nice, wear expensive clothes mm -hmm. or name brand clothes. So I remember having my first job was a Domino's pizza. I heard that. I delivered pieces of Domino's. I was making tips. I deliver on a bike. I didn't have a license or no cars. So I deliver on a bike. Got robbed a few times. People mm. just snatched my pepperoni. I didn't care. I keep it moving. I heard that. You know, I'm not yeah, fighting. I'm not, no fight. yeah. I'm not dying for no yeah. anchovies. Okay? Hey, you're crazy as hell. So I kept on moving. I'm making a lot of tips. I'm making about 50 bucks a day. I've saved all my money. And I time to go back to school. I went and got all the brand name stuff. You know, I go to school. And here it is. I'm a dark skinned guy. Fresh clothes. Jewelry on. Everybody think I'm a drug dealer. Oh, they man. Had no now idea you got to deal with this. They had no idea I was dealing ground beef, yes, sausage, yeah, and pepperoni, pepperoni. extra large pan pizza. They had no idea that's what I was dealing. But then one thing, you know, but one thing too, I was also very quiet. Mm -hmm. I was. And that's why the Americans are curious when you're dark skin and you're quiet. They're scared of you. They yeah, think, they they start making their own stories. Yeah, up they, too, this like, guy man. and he had an accent. So yeah. back then you had an accent. You was dark skin. You was automatically a Jamaican drug dealer. Yeah, man. <laughs> back in the East Coast, they did not, you know, because African. What did I mean? Africans in America at that time it was mostly Jamaicans. So everybody that was dark skin that wore nice clothes and jewelry. They were drug dealers. So everybody thought I was a drug dealer. I said, you know what? Let it keep, yeah, keep thinking yeah. that. Right, yeah. They're not going to mess with me. They think I'm a drug dealer. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm a quiet drug dealer. Yeah. <laughs> Asking you got stuff falling out your pocket. Like, man, you hand that to me real quick, man. Like, man, I got to go get these. And get this that's off. when the comedy started. That's when I started making fun of people. What are you wearing? What you got on? You know, yeah. and that's where comedy started. So you just brewing. started snapping back first. I started snapping back. Did people started... tell you you were funny? funny. Like, yeah, man, did... you should try, man. You ever thought about Well, that was when I got out of high school. When I graduated mm-hmm. out of high school, I was still at Domino's. I was like, end up being like a assistant manager. I've been there like three, four years go at this ahead time. Now. So then, you know, my coworkers like, man, you funny. Go to open mic. And that's why I all started. I started you had going. never tried wow. it before? Never tried it. So I started going to open mic. It was Wednesday night in Philly back in like 93, 94. And I started going every Wednesday night. And I just started developing this act. What man. was that so-called break for you? You know, now you can look back and there's so many milestones. The thing with comedy, you could, you could tell your first time on stage if it's for you. And I remember my mm-hmm. first time on stage, I got off. And, and back then, you know, during open mic, um, you went on and current to how popular you were. Like mm. I was a new open micer, so most likely I, if there's 20 people on the list, I'm going on last. By the time I go on stage, it's just Quiet. a few comedians yeah. mm-hmm. and a couple of your cousins that came out to see you. Mm-hmm. You know, when I got off, a few comedians said, hey, you know, you got the stage present. You, you got it. You know, and, they, they and how sh- long were you doing that? Open mic was a while. It's like two, three years. Damn. You know, it's, down there is different. These guys just go and get a social media account, put a bunch of 15-second videos together. Mm-hmm. Three years later, they're doing stand-up, and they're getting paid. Yeah. You know, back then, I mean, I think it take a good three years to realize what you want to talk about. What yeah, topic. them outliers hours, man. Got to put that 10,000 yeah. in first. Michael Blackson, I, I'm going to get right to it, man. Comedy beef. Yes. What is going on? And, and, and I don't know if I start at Kevin Hart, Faze on Love, you know what I'm saying? If, it, if it's uh, Gary Owen. Let, what what happens with Kevin Hart? Uh, what what happened there? I have no idea what happened. I don't know where me and Kevin Hart fell out of. Mm-hmm. When? At one point. But you know, I'm Because you and Kevin were cool. We're very cool. Right. I mean, like, I think the last time I saw Kevin was about. Three years ago, two and a half, when he sh- he did a special at the Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia at the football uh-huh, field. Uh huh. Yeah. That's last because I went there and I went to go support him. That's the last time we spoke. We you know we shook hands and gave a hug and you know and I started I started in front and watch him perform. And uh, since then, I mean, you know, I do a lot of crap on social. I do a lot. I talk a lot of crap on social media. Mm-hmm. I'm always saying crazy things. I'm always doing things. But I, maybe sometime in between the, those time, I probably said something crazy about him. Mm-hmm. And he probably didn't appreciate it. And I think that's probably when he started not I, for some I just I think he's don't fuck with me. That's what right, I think. Right, yeah. You know, I think he had, I, man, I have no idea. I, I never understood why or what it was, you know, but it didn't matter to me. Nobody owes anybody anything. You know, but I think if somebody have a problem with you, I think they should come out and say it. I just I just th- I just thought he had a problem with me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know from where it came from. Maybe because I don't know, competition. I have no idea what it was. Mm-hmm. And we are not no close to this. Kevin's a whole different level. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just a crazy guy to do and say what I want to say. I'm not, you know, um, I'm not endorsed by no Nike. I'm not endorsed by. I'm not on an ABC, you right? Know? Yeah. And I just, I'm just a raw. I'm a raw talent that just say his speak his mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't hold nothing back. You and, and you speak your mind on everything, everything. Like yourself. I you know what I'm saying? Everyone. Like, like if you say crazy stuff about, about yourself, <laughs> I, 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 I should be afraid. With yeah, you, be you afraid. Know, like if you, I don't give a damn about, about me. me. Exactly. Mm-hmm. How, how the f can I love you? You know what I'm saying? So so it, now when I see you going at Kevin, mm-hmm. how serious is that? In which part? Like just like like it, it, are you really yeah, we, mad at Kevin? No, no, I'm not mad. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad at I think he's mad at me. Right. Okay. And yeah, that's, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. what the problem is. He's mad at me and I understand why he's mad at me. Mm-hmm. I think as comedians, nothing should piss us off. Right, right. You know, because we're allowed to talk about every and everything. I mean, he's. We know right now he's pissed about me making um, a joke about his situation. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it, I did not make a joke about it. I made a joke about the tape that he made. You made a tape, and that's what we do. We make fun of tapes, mm-hmm. just like Tyrese. If you, Tyrese never made a tape, we have nothing to right. no joke about. You make a tape, and I clown the tape. If you never said public. nothing. I would have never said nothing. Right. It wasn't like it was some situation where you and him only knew something. Exactly. And then you came on your social media yeah. platform and said And such snitch such. on him. Right. Kevin Hart snitched on himself. Mm-hmm. He did a first 48 on himself. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like time ticking and everything, man. So do you, it's not so bad that y'all would never be cool. Like y'all can see each other and, and probably have a, a, a conversation where y'all can bury it. I don't know. Right, I mean, right. You I, like big, big. I'm telling no. you, it's not me. Big like that. It's not me. I think it's him. You know, but I don't. Right. Got, yeah. It doesn't it, matter. It ain't gonna stop your shows. It ain't gonna, gonna stop, stop my his. shows. You know. Then hey, ah. the thing. And then they always ask, "Am I jealous of Kevin?" Jealous. I'm. 
why would I? Are you listen, jealous of Kevin? Never. I'm Let me tell you something. When I came, just getting a visa to come to America alone, I felt like I made it. Right, right, okay? right, right. I mean, there was thousands right. of people that go to the embassy like, do every day. you know day. my triumphs are? Like, Man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm successful. When, yeah. Once America said you could come in, I said, thank you, I made it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I am here. I am here, yeah. you know. So everything that happens from there on is just extra from God. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for any of this. So I'm not jealous of anybody. I'm very happy where I'm at. Here's Faze my quote. Of of faith. My, yes. my quote is, you know, people, they always ask me about Kevin, like, my job. Never measure your success by Bye. what somebody else has. Exactly, man. Somebody I'm, else has 11. You don't have to get 12 to say you made it. Yeah, true. Sure. As long they as do. you maximize your God-given talent, you're successful. Yeah, mm -hmm. I never, I always say, man, I can't count what's in your pocket. Heck no. Like, you don't know what that person did to get where he's at. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, I'm good to go, man. Yes, I'm very good. Phase on love, Phase bro. on. Now, Phase on, you know, and these, these are my partners as well. And mm -hmm. I see that you and Phase on, I don't know if y'all still going at it, but I know that there was... You know, there, was, there, there was more social yeah, and more was, posts was, going on. It was. I, I felt like it was all coming from Kevin. Mm, mm. You know, I felt like, hey, he's the sickest guys on me. You know, even if I had an interview at the other station in New York, mm. and I just felt like, man, is Kevin Hall got all you guys on the payroll? Mm. Mm. He tried to make me sit on his seat that he bought, and mm. he tell me about the seat. I'm like, give me a new seat. I don't right want here, <laughs> Get the seat away from me, you know? And then I get ambushed. Don't, you know, what it did, because after that whole thing when I made fun of Kev, um, Every time a comedian went into that station, they asked the comedian what you felt about what Mike did. Mm. Every comedian. Uh -huh. So those who was again, it became like picking sides. Mm -hmm. Everybody had some had some didn't have, nobody really had my side. Some were neutral and some definitely had Kevin's side. Mm -hmm. You know, those guys all play safe. They all they play safe. I don't play safe. I heard that. You know. So uh, what happened, it they, they showed everybody's envy that was definitely against what I what I did. You know, so pretty much they were creating beef with me and these guys. Mm. Mm. That's what y'all do. The radio stations love beef. Yeah. America love beef. Go ahead now. America, you know? yeah, we beef. Love it. It's you good. survive on beef. beef right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, but um, that's what it is. So the post showed me all these videos of other guys that was thought I was wrong or making fun of him, which I never understood why. You know. And that's how the whole phase on thing started. So mm -hmm. I went in to ask me about phase on, and I made a joke. You know, the phase on felt like I was wrong. I was looking for attention. I'm like, look, attention. I got two point. Six million followers. I, I got attention from them. I don't need attention from nobody else. And Faison felt like I was wrong for what I did. And I just looked at Faison's video. I'm like, well, Faison looks like he's hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're hungry, you don't make d good decisions. Go ahead now. I mean, how many times you, go, you, you, you ever go? You ever go to the grocery store? Yes. While you're hungry, yes. you buy a bunch of things you yeah. never eat. Everything. And then you get to the crib after you ate. Like, man, what the fuck? What the what hell did I this? buy? Like, man, what is exactly. this? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what did I get? I felt like he didn't make good decisions because I felt like he was hungry. Mm. And what I like about, about that too, man, is that it's, it's still in comedy form. Yes, you know what I'm I saying? Keep, I try to keep it comedy. Yeah, it's still in comedy yeah, It was form, very comedy. Man. And then, okay, he, so he saw that. And I called him. I said, Faison's my homie. I love him. Yeah, but, yeah, know, yeah. Mine too. Then Faison went on his on his make a video calling me, I'm, I'm not successful, I'm whack, I'm this and that, and I'm a, I look like a monkey, and I didn't get a Black Panther because I'm like, you are, this is not comedy. Mm. So what I did, I had to light him up with comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I lit his ass up. So where where are you guys now? Um, I lit him up real bad. Okay. You know. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, Just so I can circle She's back to yeah, that, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Fizz has a big guy, but I wasn't worried too yeah. much. He's on probation. I'm but, not yeah. worried. <laughs> <laughs> see, like, man, hello? I'm not here. Uh, he, hello? Officer. Uh, you know, but and he showed that he's a true comedian because after when he realized that he was torn up, mm. you, know, he, you know, he sent me a text. Saying that, hey, you know, that what you did was funny with it. I love that, man. And then after that, that I said, okay, I said, okay, let's try to f make this like it was just all fun and good. Yeah, I love know? that, bro. So that's, you know, me and Faze aren't good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, know? I love that. And but I love and I love to see situations end like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm like saying? We and, good. And, and both of y'all men, and like I say, man, you got your audience, Faze on, got his, whoever mm -hmm. it may be. So I love to see that it ends like that. Mm -hmm. and, and it ain't stopped you from being sharp. You know yeah, what I'm right. saying? Gary Owen. Gary Owen. Man, you the colonizer. You put up a video, bro, on Gary uh, Owen that has so much fire in it, bro. Like, I go hard, man. I believe if you, if you don't go hard, don't go at all. My followers know if anybody's talk about me, they're going to get it real, real hard. Yeah, I go, because I go he did in. the whole, you know, 
there's been several uh, African movies that were made. Right. You weren't in any of them. You know, and, mm-hmm. and you posted his video. Mm-hmm. And then your rebuttal was like, there's been millions. Millions of white movies that you've never been in. I yeah. told him he's been in two black movies and both, he played the same character. The, the black guy that had a white friend yes. or a white friend that had a white guy. Yes. And this is, I said this is credit in the movie. The white guy with black friends. Yes. <laughs> hey, man, and there was one, the way that you ended it, when do you remember how you ended that that post? Which one? I did a couple. Is it the was one the, with the one white, with the white. Um, where you were talking, and then you said the last thing you said was, "Oh yeah, the wet smell like a wet you wet dog smelling beach." Right. <laughs> and then you said, and then you said something with the n word, and you said, "Oh yeah, you hunky nigga cracker beach." Yeah, no, you said you, mu- <laughs> you it was something like you uh, such and such uh, n word, and you, then you said. It was something like, and now I dare you to say the same. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I said, you know, I feel like Gary want to be black so bad. Yeah. You know, I said, you want to be black so bad? Well, fuck you, nigga. And I say it back. I didn't think so. That was powerful, bro. <laughs> hey, dude, that was powerful, That was so powerful, man. it made him make a video. <laughs> he made a new video, and he had his wife say it for him, because his wife is black. So he made a video, he said, Mike, you bitch ass, and his wife said, nigger. He said, hey, Mike, you punk ass, his wife said, nigger. So he had his wife do it. So I went back and made another video. I said, well, since your wife called me the N-word, now she has to get it. I'm going to tell, exactly, oh, right. tell you exactly why she's with you. She's with you for your 800 FICA score. Go ahead now. Okay. I said, and then in two weeks, her black brothers are going to rob you. Mm. I also said, uh, uh, once your comedy money runs out, she's going to leave you and your little baby pink dick. Jesus. And find a man with a mutumbo and get a blood infection. There it is. <laughs> hey, man, do you write before I'm you go? Sure. You know, I, I take a few You have minutes. an idea. Like, I got an like, idea. And then I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but you know what? Gary wants to get, but me and Gary was all, uh, at first, I didn't appreciate what he, he went on the other station in New York and did an interview when he had the little dressed up like the 69 kid, whatever. Yeah. And he, you know, the accent by Michael Blackson. And the thing with the accent by other comedians, he kind of like made joke. But mine was more like, he. I felt like he was, he really meant this. Like, Mike is a one trick pony. Mike say a one Michael Blackson joke. You know, you can't, you say, oh, okay, my, rest my kid. He felt like Michael Blackson was nothing. Mm. And then I, you know, that's why I made the first video in the first place. I felt like he was really trying to insult me. But then at the end of the day, it all ended up as comedy. Right. Because I want to entertain. I'm not here to, you know, get deported. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, don't you know them, I don't want <laughs> like Kevin <laughs> Hawk and his whole crew caught immigration. Let's get yeah. this guy out of here. Like, being, I, I, got, I still got papers, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I still got papers. You know? So with Gary one, I, I mean, it, I, just from watching the back and forth with me and him, it reminded me of like the Jeffersons. Mm. Joe Jefferson was, you know, he was a crazy guy. Had his wife. He just said he talked to, he talked to his neighbor, his neighbor that yeah, had Tom. the black wife, Tom. He talked to Tom crazy, called him a hunky every day, and Tom had a black wife. And I'm like, damn, this is a TV show. Mm-hmm. Just from the thing with me and Gary, turned into like a potential television. Did, show. I'm pretty sure y'all did things together, like the comic views of the world. Oh yeah, we did or, a lot of stuff together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Gary, come on, we started around the same time. Yeah, man. And we've done a lot together. I so heard we, that. we 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 talked on the phone about 30 minutes yesterday. I heard that. You know, so that that just that was all comedy. The only be, the main beef is that little midget, this guy, this sensitive guy that could commit suicide by jumping off the curb. That they, guy. And that would be Kevin Hart. <laughs> all right. Yeah, he ain't he ain't buried that one yet. All right. <laughs> the lit. AF tour, man. How and did, did did this tour just start? It just started. It's, it's you, D. Ray Davis, Ricky Smiley, mm-hmm. Benji Brown, of course, and hosted by Martin Lawrence. Of course, God, man. How great has this tour been? Just out the gate. This is this is gonna be our second date. The oh. first date was lit. It was in Atlantic City, New Jersey, about ten thousand people. You know, uh, Benji goes up and do warm up, and then they show like a ten minute video of Martin and everything he's done and accomplished. And then Martin comes out, crowd go crazy. You know, Adele goes on, I went on, and D Ray went on. So it was fire, man. Hey man, now you do a lot of shows and a lot of traveling. Yes. Do you like smaller venues as opposed? Is it different when you step in different. front of ten thousand as opposed to? 2,000, 1,500, yeah. 3,000. It's, it's, it's a, a difference. It's a different. They're drilling from the crowd. I mean, when they call your name, you know, that 10,000 people screaming is a whole different thing. You know, but when I do tours like that with 
four other comedians. I'm only limited to about 25, 30 minutes. Killer minutes, though. Killer, yeah, killer minutes. You know, but when I do my own tours, I do up 45 minutes on hour. So that you get more from coming to like a Michael Blackson show at the Improv or like mm-hmm. a smaller theater, you know. But either way, I hey, whether it's ten people or ten thousand people, I'm gonna give them the same show. I'm gonna give that five. Let me ask one. you this, man: with so many people recording now, it's tough. Yeah, it's gotta be, man, because when we see like an artist, if Chris Brown come to town, you want Chris to do the the big songs. You right. know what I'm saying? You want Neo, you want the weekend to do the hits. You mm-hmm. know. With comedians, it's like we want the hits, but we also like you guys are always got to come with something new because social media yeah, can burn out could burn a, you jo- out. a joke. Yeah, it's tough, man, and and that's why I don't blame Dave Chappelle. When you the cast tell you turn oh, off, no, nah, they take your phone. You yeah. go to Dave Chappelle show, you're not gonna have your phone. I heard as you that. enter the building, the phone is put into a lock thing. You hold that that thing and it's locked thing. When you're ready to get out, then you get your phone back. I heard you that. Know, but that, I guess that could be expensive. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, be, yeah. But yeah. I, 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 you got to give it a try because certain comedians, like I, I'm a comedian that's really hot on social media. So whenever I hit the stage, every phone is out. Right. You know, so like certain. And plus, we don't know what you're going to say. So I'm trying to capture exactly. the moment. Right? You see, I got two cameras on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going Damn on? Damn it. Yeah, I don't know what the hell Who is going on. Who did this shit to me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who makes your outfits, bro? Uh, like you them, go from yeah. the top. To the shoes, everything. Yeah, hey, you have to be different, man. Yes. You have to be different. And that's one, one thing. Like, Michael Black, you turned yourself into, like, a brand. You have to. Like, and those are the things you want. Like, Mudas, Muda Sucker, mm-hmm. boom. Like, I know you could be mm-hmm. somewhere else and hear somebody call that All out. All day, every yeah. day. You know what I'm saying? The beach nigga. I'm the only like, guy where when I'm out in public, my fans curse me out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, you punk beach nigga. <laughs> yeah, you, out of love. And I'm like, thank hey, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll take that picture. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> my kids, I'm talking with my kids. Like God, what did he just say to you? you have to don't worry, they love me. Trust this me, is all love. Trust me, we're in, me. we're in first class. This, this pays off. <laughs> you know, but but where do you? Where well, did the you know what? One start? thing, yeah, man. I, I get pissed when I see headliners go on stage with a t-shirt on or a, a hundred dollar outfit. I think mm. these fans paying a lot of money to come and see you, mm-hmm. and you have to go out there. You have to shine. My outfits. You gonna you're not gonna remember one thing about me. You gonna remember what the hell I had on. Yeah, man. You know, I believe in going on stage. You know, I'm a big, I'm a I'm big on like. When a headliner hits the stage, how the crowd reacts to him. Mm-hmm. And I think your clothing is number one. Yeah. You know, so my stuff come from, like, this, these, what I'm having on today comes from Togo. Most of my clothes come from Togo. That's in West Africa. I have a lady out there that makes it. Wow. And um, and it's because it's, I get it, it's less expensive back home. Mm. To get you it know. from there and to, get it yeah, shipped out? Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. Yeah, if I get somebody to make it here, they're probably going to charge me about $1,000. Wow. Yeah, I know. I definitely would. You know, but <laughs> yeah, if I get, sure, I get sure. it for about Half of that. I heard that. You know, now, so. can you wear that suit that we see you in right now? Can you wear that again? It's tough. I, I got to give it a break. Right, you know, right, like right. Once break. I put a picture up, I give a long break, like right. four or five months. And then do you go back in and delete it? You know, you got to scroll down like that. <laughs> Archive it real quick. Yeah, I got oh, yeah. it. That's a bad thing about social media. It makes you spend money. Yeah, it dates you too, <laughs> You know, because you have to like, I have to, I can't wear the same thing. Almost. Yeah, I mean, girl. I have to wait. Like, but these are mostly costumes. These are clothes for the yeah, stage. Yeah, I, I got so you. So I might not, you know, if I wear it on stage, maybe two, three months apart. Maybe one of those times I can't take a picture. And you do the shoes and everything, you know, yes, fam. Man, but he can on, write man. it off. No, he can't. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> are you right? Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Oh yeah, definitely. It's America, man. You write everything off. Yeah. You, know the, yeah. you know what the good thing about that too is like nobody can accidentally say they took your jacket. Like if you right, if you put your jacket in a like coat check, you're like, come on, man, get my damn jacket. Back. You know that's You know, you knew that. Do you ever have anybody that ask you for your clothes? Oh, they do. Oh, yeah. And I think I'm gonna start. Maybe I will start auctioning my clothes very soon. Yeah, yeah. you you showed no said auction. He didn't say give it away. Yeah, yeah. Auction, yeah my man something. said, yeah, you yeah. you're like, nah, I, I ain't gonna pay just... this child support. Yeah, how many kids do you have? I have three boys. You know, I have twin boys that are 11 and yeah. I have a 19-year-old son. I heard that. Do they know who dad is? Oh, yeah, they know who dad is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, they come yeah. to the shows. My boys, especially the little ones, man, when I get off stage, I t- you know, I take them sometime for a weekend and they'll go on the road with me. Mm. And when I get off stage, they want to, like, go on stage and just play around. Wow. How hard is it to travel as much as you do? Because I follow you very well on Instagram. When I look, it's always Somewhere else. a ticket. Yeah. Of you flying somewhere, are you in a hotel, or are you going to a show, and I'm like, man, and, and it don't even seem like you do Thursday to Sunday runs. It seems like you always somewhere. Yeah, yeah but and and I mean, I was, I was, you know, sometimes we get on a paper chase. Okay, I, I say I want to buy this and I want to get this, and I go and I bust my ass and mm-hmm. work extra. You know, but once I get what I want and I kind of slow down a little bit, 
you know, mm-hmm. and try to enjoy that money because at the end of the day, you can't take all that money with you, mm-hmm. you know. So right now, I'm on like I'm, I'm on like a. I told my guy, my guy that booked my shows. I said, listen, I only want to be going three days a week, no more than four or five days. Mm-hmm. You know, some cut. You got to put a lot of work in to get there, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got to pull a lot of. Work. Everybody wants me. Like I mean, I could work every day if I wanted to. Right. You know. So and that is a good thing. It's you know a lot of comedians out there cannot get work. You know, and to get work, you have to just keep making a name for yourself. But, bro, you, you have marketed relevant. yourself so well, just even just in the last couple or few years. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and, and we, I mean, man, I, I know it's been a long comedy road. You know what I'm saying? But what you have done in the last three years. Compared also to with the hard work of like the last 20, 20 years, it's like, damn, like, look what I did in the last three. But and that's the good thing about it is I have the older audience, I have the audience from 40 to 60 year old, and mm. from my comedy few days. And now, in the last three years, I've built up these new young kids, you know? mm-hmm. and that's why I try to keep myself on television at least once a year. I go do what I do while and now to keep those kids' audience, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, or hip hop squares. In fact, very start conscious airing. to what you're doing, got stuff, you and got you it. make sure even when you do hip hop squares, you make sure that you tattoo our brains too. Oh, definitely, like you're gonna let us remember. <laughs> <laughs> that you were in a square somewhere. <laughs> Whether the, anybody picked me or not, I would make myself known. Exactly. You it became know. your show. What's Natalia? the next big goal? Uh, produce my own movies. I heard okay. that. You know, like what kind of movies? Comedy. Man. Uh-huh. I just want to. I just want to make people laugh. Like, do you want to do like spoof comedies, kind of like how Marlon mm-hmm. Wayne has done a, those comedies? Or? A combination. You know, okay. uh, I want to do a combination of that, and but I want to just keep. I gotta. You gotta keep feeding these streets. You, mm-hmm. Know? Mm-hmm. you gotta keep feeding them with stuff. They out there, they want to see you. And the thing, I, I do my shows, the whole world cannot see me. So the only way they yeah. can see you, you got to put yourself yeah. on television or in the movies. Yeah, yeah, because you, know? you go to them. But you like, man, if you want to super serve, then you got to do, do, do that. Do, you know, do I go to them, I cannot see everybody. I yeah. go to like an improv in Houston, do like 12 shows. And I, that's only, what, 6,000 people. There's still mm-hmm. another... Three million people that want to see you. I so heard you have that. To put yourself... Well, see you, not us. Damn, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. totally different. You what know was what the last saying? movie you saw in the theaters? Uh, uh, Black Panther. Oh, yeah, what'd you think? Yeah, it was great. So amazing. It was great. It was a great movie. Gosh. It was, and it's like, I think it was a top gross movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what, yeah. what did your sons think of it? Being able to see someone like a Black Panther up on the big screen? Nah, the little, the little one definitely appreciated it, man. You know, it, and it was, it's a good feeling to know that, you know, you could be a hero. You know? mm-hmm. It's not always have to be the Spider-Man or Superman who have black heroes. What is, and, and you're about to do a Netflix special as well? I'm about to, pretty much what I'm going to do, I'm going to shoot it myself, uh-huh. you know, and then, you know, sell it at the right time. Yeah, man. You know, sell it oh, when you're yeah, really hot. Right. We have a movie about to come out. Like, I did a movie with uh, Cat Williams and Mike Evans. It's called, it's Meet the Blacks too. It's called The House mm-hmm. Next Door. It's coming out Y'all Halloween night. That, right? We just finished that. Yeah, man. So um, my goal is like, shoot this special and then, you know, when the movie comes out, then you go to Netflix. Hey, you know, you got to give them, the, with Netflix, it's all timing. Mm-hmm. Right, right. The more right. money you want, the, but the, you know, the timing got to be right. You have to be hot. Mm-hmm. How did you feel about the Monique and the Netflix thing? You know, the two Monique, I mean, 500,000 is a good number probably prior to them giving out the $20 million. Right, right, you know? right. They would have given it to her two years ago. Of course, you would have took it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you don't go give out $20 million and want to offer somebody else half a million dollars. Right. Yeah. You know, so she look at it as an insult. But Do you trip at, over how insulted everybody was by her not doing that? Everybody had an opinion mm-hmm. about her decision. Yeah, that, that it, you know... It, it, she I also think she probably went around with it the wrong way. Right, I hear you. you. Know, by, I hear you. By dogging him out. You I know, hear now you. you're really not going to get this. Thing. Right. I'm going to give you nothing now. Now you have to go a whole different route. You know, and with Netflix, I must, you know, they probably looked at social media takes big counts to this. Like they look wow. at your following. They're like, okay, you you have 200,000 followers. How many new subscribers can you give us? Right. You know, I hear they you. probably I hear looked you. into that as well. Even though, don't get it wrong, Dave Chappelle has no following. But Dave Chappelle is Dave Chappelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, There's a total difference. It's totally different. He did a show and then disappeared and his demand is so high. And that's why they gave him $20 million. You know, Chris Rock, on the other hand, Chris Rock has been kept himself relevant in comedy. You know, with, with Netflix, it is, I think even with everything in America, it's all about what have you done lately. Hey, what man, if they gave you $20 million, how mm-hmm. many Netflix specials would you turn into them? But they gave million? you $20 million for each one. Oh my god! I'll be shooting one. I'll shoot one right now. Yeah. Would this, yeah. this would be a Netflix special. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh Michael Blackson live yeah. on ninety two point three. Big boo! Hey. Y'all just telling Michael like what happened to uh, your extra uh, Super Bowl ticket that you, uh, you were know, soliciting for? Listen, my my team made it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I was man. Trying to find a date, a banging date. I couldn't. You know, I, I had women send me their pictures and 
tell me why I deserve to be my date. I was, oh, they were offering me all kinds of stuff. <laughs> what kind of stuff were they offering you? Oh, all kinds of stuff. And, and I'm like, I, I want a hoe, but I want a ho ho. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a real yeah, not a real you know what whore. Saying, like, like, yeah. <laughs> I want a whore, not a whore. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? I was not a horse. You know, so I, I end up just taking one of my good my homie and I'm like, you know, we'll find some hoes when we get there. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. How exciting. It is, it is a Super Bowl. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We, we get over there. We'll find Bring it. a jacket, get warm. Oh, uh, was there any guys who were DMing you? Oh yeah, guys like guys listen, girls, man. They right? said, listen, the guys was like, listen, I'm not gonna do all that stuff the girls are offering you, but I'll be a good homie. I'm like, I don't need no friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no new friends. I mean, man, I could literally <laughs> drop this ticket out the window <laughs> and get the hilarious. same kind of thing. I can sit next to a stranger. You exactly, know what I'm saying? Exactly, man. I'm Michael Blackson. What's in your DM? Yeah, man. Uh, my Besides the people abuse, t- yeah, uh, abuse. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly abuse. Just I heard people that. looking for my attention. You know, I get a lot of I get a lot of fans that just tell me how much I make their day and how mm-hmm. much I make them feel better, how they were sick and they come to my page and feel better, you know. And it's a great feeling, you know. And, and I mean, I mostly post the ignorant rude stuff, but I get a lot of good stuff. Oh, I can imagine, bro. A lot of good stuff, you know. I can besides imagine. the, you know, you black under the bed, you bitch nigga, you punks. <laughs> yeah, that stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Your Don't mother you. you came out of your mother's asshole. Yeah. I mean, those are the kind of stuff I get, man. Is there yeah. anything that's off <laughs> limits? <laughs> With me? Yeah. Nothing's off limits. I heard that. Because then they'll go there too, though. Yeah, you know I, nothing's off, off limits. If you come in my DM, I don't care what you are. You can be a kid. I don't care. You can crawl. We can brawl. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> Big Boy Big Neighborhood, luck. Michael Blackson, the African king of comedy, man. Thank you for coming yeah. into yeah. the neighborhood, brother. Hey, oh. Thanks for having me, man. Here's man. my quote. With all due respect, I have no respect. <laughs> so that's, the quote that's my, is. There you go. No disrespect, but with all due respect, I have no respect. I That's heard my tour. That. It's coming to your city near you. Look out for me. But this weekend is all about the Lit SF tour with Martin Woo! Lawrence. Man, okay. will you continue to do what you're doing? Like I say, man, we all follow. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and don't change it. And when bit. I leave out of here, don't do nothing to my suit, mother <laughs> sucker. We will. <laughs> <laughs> we will <laughs> and we trying to get it up first you know what I'm saying who did this to, and the people be so on so quick so man. you know what I'm saying and you pick it right and I even love when you caption your arguments and it's out of love you it's know what I'm love. saying it's like people love to talk mess to you yes. mm-hmm. and then you so put awesome. their picture up and talk mm-hmm. mess it's back and also man just how honorable the one time when you were at the uh, the airport mm-hmm. and the girl, it was something with the girl denying you something. And y'all did like a oh. skit. And remember, and, and then the oh, yeah, airline yeah, yeah. came oh, and yeah. let her go Trouble. and you hired her. Yes. So what, I think she ended up getting her job because I told her, I said, listen, if, if you lose your job because of me, I will hire you. Yeah, man. You know, and I think they like they had temporarily like suspended her and she ended up eventually getting her job Yeah, and you, and, oh, but man. you crusaded, but I, I, I bro. Say, yeah, you didn't I, leave her. No, nah, I didn't leave her. She, I gave her my number, I, you know. And I'm like, I'm not going to leave her hanging. I'm but like, you even leave. kept us updated. Like, I, hey, I think this is going on. Don't do that to her. Yeah. It was on me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because others, man. Because the, the, the airline, they don't want to They don't want to mess with me because I got some followings. Yeah, and I you put do, some man. posts and they'll lose some customers yeah. as well. So yeah. don't don't don't, lo- don't lo- lose a job because of what I've done. And I it's obvious you say what's on your mind. Yes, you I know do. what I'm saying? And you can always just switch your airline. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Michael Blackson in the neighborhood. Big boy's Big neighborhood. Boy.